Well, I've never been the wealthy one But my father, he is a king And the things that I have ain't all that much But I've never went in need And I know he watches over me Cause he gave his angels charge and the price he paid there that day Is what it took for me to find my way No greater love has he shown I uh, got to meet him yet, you'll meet him tonight I promise you won't forget him we did, He did bring his wife with him We did find out last night she is on medication I don't blame her, I'd have to be on medication if I tried with her I don't know if you met when he <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but I would just like to thank you for making uh, this day special for me and all the young people and are so sweet here and they're so kind and, and y'all have just been, made my day very special and I want to thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. Today's her birthday. And so... And still got to, to celebrate their birthday together today. They both turned 25. And, uh, yeah. amen. Again. Again. <laughs> amen. Boy, I shouldn't have followed that lead. Amen. But, uh, anyways, we thank God for them. And, and like we said last night, a godly wife was from God. Amen. amen. That is so true. Thank you, preacher. It's a joy to be back again tonight. Amen. Well, I'd rather be here than anywhere I know. Amen. I, I came up in church, been in church all my life. Mom and Dad got saved when I was about two years old, three years old, somewhere like that. And uh, came up all my life in church, and I've heard, and I love preachers, because uh, I are one. <laughs> and I love preachers. But I tell you, we do say some of the strangest things sometimes. I, I used to hear the preacher say, well, I, on Sunday morning, how many would rather be here than be in jail? Well, about half the crowd would kind of raise their hand. <laughs> how many would rather be here than be in the hospital? Well, you get a few more raised their hand. And, uh, and I thought, well, I guess that's just what preachers say. Almost apologizing for being in the house of God. Yeah. I want to tell you something. I don't know anywhere tonight in the state of Virginia, I'd rather be than right here in God's house with God's people and God's presence and God's power. Amen. Praise Amen. Praise God. Bring them on in here. Come on in here. I like that. Amen. Amen. I preached in one church and a lady was in one of them chairs and I got to preach and I jumped over her. <laughs> Do what? I'm a rascal. <laughs> Amen. Never said Amen. Before. She knows me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I like you, Mama. Come on, I'll just get on in here. That's good. That's good. Y'all cut a wheelie while I'm preaching if you want to. <laughs> it won't bother me a bit. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, it is joy. Thank you so much. I'm going to say it. Thank God for folks bringing it. Ma'am? Well, thank you. I like your, I like your second opinion better than the first one. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I appreciate. It. Did Amen. you bring them, lady? Ma'am, did you bring them? Uh, Jakey and I did. Yes, sir. God bless you. Amen. She's a sweetheart. Well, you know she is. Y'all excuse us. Me and her talk. <laughs> she is. Come get y'all like the hell. How you doing? You all right? Be careful. My wife's over there. <laughs> All right, you be careful now. Do it. Yes, you can. How are you doing tonight? We're glad to have you. Glad to be here. You doing all right? We're good, good. I got me three that's going to help me anyhow. Amen. Amen. All right. But I, I want to thank you, preacher. What is a blessing. Amen. I'm going to tell you what. This is, oh, I think, pleases Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to tell you what. That's the kind that came to hear him. Yes. The sick, the lame, the blind. Amen. Amen. When John wasn't even, John the Baptist wasn't even sure if that was really him and sent those disciples to say, Art thou he or should we look for another? He, Jesus said, Hey, the blind are seeing, the lame are walking, Amen. and the deaf are hearing, and the gospel is being preached. And I believe John said, That's him. Amen. 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 Well, glory to God. I tell you, it's been a great day. I enjoyed it. 
and appreciate so much the hospitality, appreciate your kindness, and appreciate Brother Danny and Sister Darley uh, staying over uh, today to be with the fellowship with Ava and I and to be here. And uh, honestly, this is the most time we've spent together since the years I've known them. And, and this is a real joy. We've enjoyed it. I kind of hate to see them go because they've been driving every night and I'm going to have to put gas in my car tomorrow. <laughs> So I kind of hate to see it go. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> uh, amen. I, I, preacher, I, the Lord, I, boy, I wrestled on. I'll be honest with you. I tried to take one message at a time, and I wrestled a little bit over this morning, and finally got settled. And I don't know if anybody else cared about it, but I got settled. That's all matters. And I did what I felt the Lord wanted. And then this afternoon, man, I've been bouncing everywhere, trying to, to you know, and, and Try to get, but boy, I tell you what, about an hour and a half ago, God settled me. And I kind of want to stay closer to the theme, of course, from revival, fundamentalism. Now, let me tell you what, what, what we really need is also, I tell you what, revival, fundamentalism, as we believe it historically, as fundamental, independent, old fashioned Baptists. Yeah. I tell you what to do it is when the children of God just have revival. Amen. I believe what we need in America is revival. Right. Uh, I agree with what uh, I believe was said this morning. I, I believe, hey, the problem's not in the White House, and I don't like what's going on in the White House. Amen. I don't like what's going on in the State House. I don't like what's going on. But I want to tell you, boy, and I sure don't like what's going on in most of the schoolhouses. Amen. But I want to tell you the problems that God's having. That's Our right. judgment must begin at the house of God. Amen. Amen. And uh, but I, I want to tonight, I, uh, the Lord just settled me, and I want you to open your Bible. I want to try to help us tonight. I, I want to do my best. I, I believe revival preaching ought to help the child of God, as Vance Abner used to say, fall in love with Jesus all over again. Amen. The love of Christ constraineth us. Boy, you can for and I believe said this morning, we believe in Christian ought to look right, act right, smell right, burp right. Yeah. Right. What hair you got right? <laughs> Amen. I think men ought to look like men according to the Bible. That's not my opinion, it's in the Bible. Right. Women ought to dress in modest apparel. Now, don't, 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 don't look he's like a cat in the corner. I, I'm coming out of the Bible. Amen. Women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Right. I believe we all. I believe we all to say. I believe we all talk clean. Yes. Amen. Speak clean. Right. Amen. Hey, can I get a witness? Hey. Amen. Amen's helped me. Yeah. Right. Glory to God. Glory to God. I usually cut out about thirty minutes if I hear glory to God. <laughs> glory to God. Hey. Amen. Preach. <laughs> and since I was going to preach two hours and a half, you're doing well. <laughs> But uh, 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 listen, I believe, I know it's a child. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Amen. All things are passed away. Hey, all things become new. Yes. But you all listen. We don't do it so we have to sign a statement so we get in the choir. Right. right. We don't clean up and try to act right. And try to, you know, we don't see Rudy Toot Toot, Rudy Toot Toot. I'm a Christian from the Institute. I don't smoke it. I don't chew and I don't run with the girls who do. <laughs> We don't do it just so we say how good we are. We do it and ought to do it because we loved him. Yes, sir. He Amen. He first loved us. Yes, sir. Boy, I found out I, I, I found out a long time ago if, as pastor of Faith Baptist Church, if I could preach and beg God to put enough touch on me to try to encourage my people just to fall in love with Jesus, yeah. I'm amazed at all the vices that that takes care of yes, out of their life. I'm amazed at what that'll do. And I just want to try to help us tonight look at some things, you know. Of course, everybody don't want to help. I, I heard about these three fellas who was out in the boat and uh, fishing on the lake. And uh, all of a sudden, an angel got in the boat with them. Just came down from above and got in the boat with them. Where one fellow said, Mr. Angel, I'm glad you're here. After they got over there, shock and startlement and bewilderment, and he said, can you help us? He said, sir, what you need? He said, well, I've got a bad back. And I ain't been able to do a lot of things but just fish. That sounds like you got made to me. But anyway, <laughs> he said, I haven't been able to do it, but I can't hardly walk. That angel reached over and touched him. And immediately that pain was gone. Where was that angel six weeks ago? But anyway, that pain was gone. <laughs> My wife's recovered from back surgery. <laughs> but that pain was gone. And he said, hallelujah, boy. Now, I, I hadn't felt this good since I was 10 years old. And there was a fellow over there. He said, have I got a bike yet? Angel said, you don't know? He said, no, I'm about blind. I can't even tell. They have to throw it out there for me. I, 
I have to fill the tub before I know there's anything there. And he said, well, I'll take care of that. Touched that fellow by the side of the eye socket. All of a sudden, he jumped up. He said, I've never been able to see like this. It's amazing. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. The angel turned to that third fellow and said, hey, don't touch me. I'm on disability. <laughs> True. I will tell you something about it. True. There's a lot of Baptists on spiritual disability. Right. They don't want to get help from the Word of God. They want to enjoy their disability. Amen. And I want you to open your Bibles, please, to the book of Luke, chapter number 17. Luke, chapter number 17. Luke, chapter number 17. And I'll begin reading in verse number 11. Luke, chapter number 17, verse number 11. And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men uh, that were lepers which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. And with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that were turned to give glory to God, save the stranger. And he said unto him, Arise. Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, honor thy word. Touch thy servant, guard, guide, groom every word that's spoken tonight that it may bring honor and glory to the darling Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Holy Ghost have full sway in our lives. Bless your name. I pray, Father, that you'll save that soul near unto hell. Uh, touch the dear saint. Father, may we leave here more in love with Jesus than ever before tonight. Bless this dear church and Brother Lethford and his family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. I want you to notice here these ten, these ten men. Now they were all diseased. Every one of them has it. That, 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 that grievous uh, uh, disease of leprosy that begins so innocently uh, as a little pimple. And it doesn't look, it looks almost harmless. I mean, it just really doesn't look like it could be much more than a little rash. But then, unattended, uh, it continues to grow and, and to digress until literally the flesh becomes that pale white and falls off. I've had missionaries uh, write me and say, Preacher, we led a little girl uh, over there in uh, Cambodia to the Lord. And, and, and she had leprosy. And an arm literally fell off and while in the medical clinic. So she got saved and accepted Jesus Christ as Savior. Two weeks later, that girl died. And the Buddhist government wouldn't even allow her to be buried in any of the state uh, cemeteries. And she was buried in a termite hill. I don't mm. say, well, hallelujah, thank God. Listen, leprosy might have had her at one time, but she's going to a place she'll never have another right. pimple. Amen. Amen. But I want to say this tonight. Leprosy begins so in And in the Bible, leprosy is always a picture of sin. Yes. It's always, it cannot be healed until it's first cleansed. Right. Now, he would heal all sorts of diseases and troubles. But in the Bible, leprosy had to be cleansed. And there are even specific instructions in the Old Testament about how it needed to be dealt with. And according to the law, you were supposed to go to the priest to be declared clean. That's why Jesus is going to tell them to go to the priest. But we'll get back to that in a moment. But, but all ten men had this disease. All of them. Now, I don't know about you, but I just I believe that, I don't know, I guess in our mind, we probably thought they was all just poor People that just got sick could no no. I guarantee you there were some noblemen in there. There were probably some store owners, merchant men in there. Could have been a government official or two. And then certainly there were some uh, that that probably at one time were, 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 were could work very robustly. Maybe maybe worked in building and construction uh, of those days. Maybe some rugged fishermen. 
uh, maybe of something like that. And then I'm sure there were some that were just poor. Street people never had much of a chance to do anything. But it didn't matter. They're all on equal footing now. It doesn't matter if they could buy the countryside or whether they just lived under a tree in the countryside. When it comes to leprosy, it makes everybody equal. And I want you to look at me and listen to this. It don't matter what your status is in this world. It don't matter what they think about you at the first uh, bank, National Bank of Uptown. It don't matter what the social ladder thinks about what room you're on. I want to tell you, we were all born in the sin. We were all sin and come short of the glory of God. So they're all diseased. They all have a desire. Every one of them, when they hear that Jesus is coming, said, Master, Lord, save us. Help us. Lord, hey, touch us. Lord, help us. Hallelujah. I'm glad for folks to have a desire to get help from the Lord. Amen. I'm glad. That, by the way, that's the only way you're going to get help is to ask Him. Amen. He bled and died, and He left the quarters of glory and condescended through the crimson doors of Calvary. But friend, He's not going to force help on you. He's not going to cram it down on you. You got to ask Him. You got. He's wanting to. Amen. I like what the Dr. Oliver B. Green said many years ago. He said, God's a lot more interested in you going to heaven than you are in going there. Hmm. Amen. But I want to say this. you got to ask if they have a desire. Now, I love this. Ten men were diseased. Ten had a desire. They cried out for them. And then, number three, hey, this is my way of introduction. Guess what? Ten of them, all ten got delivered. Right. Amen. All ten. Now, I know preachers do different things with this text. You can do what you want to. All I know is if you're going to picture salvation, they all ten got it. Yeah. That's right. They all ten got delivered. Now, you, I mean, you can do what you want to with it when you're preaching, but all I know is ten had leprosy, and when they got through crying out, and the God of heaven touched them, all ten were delivered. Everyone, I got news for you. I don't care what you got. He can help you. Amen. Thank God just cry out. Oh, but listen, I, 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 I didn't know a whole lot about sin. I got saved as a five-year-old boy. I really learned more about sin after I got saved. Yeah. Man, it's just a reality. But I got folk in my church, and uh, I mean that God saved. I mean, listen, we've got folk that God saved in prison. We got folk that I, I told about this morning. Girl cleaned out a beer hall in Blacksburg, South Carolina, and God saved her. I, I've had folks in my church got saved that were known murderers, and God saved them. Amen. I'm glad God's in the saving business. Amen. Boy, hallelujah. Hey, by the way, I'd say God's in the saving business. Right, amen. God hasn't stopped saving people. Amen. God's going to save people all the way up till He comes again. In fact, the last one that He knows is going to be saved, I didn't say predestined. I said the one, the last one, according to His foreknowledge, that's going to be saved. Get saved. That's when He's coming with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Right. Amen. Then I want you to watch this. All ten were delivered, but only one was dedicated to turn back. Right. Now, I want to say this right here. We're going to get to those other nine in a minute. In a little while. Maybe not a minute, but a few minutes. But I want to say this. The average church in America is very fortunate if they can get 10% of the folks that's been saved by the grace of God to be active in the church. Right. right. A lot of folks come to church to hour. I, the great as this church is, as happy as you are, you folks look like you really kind of enjoy being saved. Amen. Amen. I'm sure you're independent Baptists. <laughs> right? I mean, I mean, really, most Baptists, they look like that they're the last dip of snuff in the can. <laughs> you go up to them say, how you doing? Uh -uh. I ain't doing no good. I thought you said, yeah, what about it? <laughs> Nobody knows the trouble. Lord have mercy. And that ain't so. You ever met anybody that's got that kind of trouble? You say, how are you doing today? And three hours later, you would to God you hadn't seen them last month. <laughs> Amen. I, 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 but I mean to tell you, 90% of the crowd, that's, I'm not talking about you. Hey, listen, there's a folk that come and enjoy the blessings of God. Enjoy the good preaching that you have here. Uh, enjoy the good singing that you have here. Enjoy these fine facilities. Enjoy the air conditioner. Hey, if I have backslid, I come here to keep from paying the air conditioner. <laughs> hey, <laughs> what's y'all tired to help pay this one? Amen. Amen. But what I'm simply saying is this. But yet, folks, when it comes to them, we got to buckle down to all this. We got to go do this. We need to do this for the church. 
And the average Baptist church in America, you'll be mighty blessed if you can get 10%. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. You can get 10%. But I want you, I don't want to focus on that crowd right now. I want to look at the the 10%. I want to look at this fella, and I like him. Man. Now, forgive me. When I was a boy, daddy go get one of the prescriptions at the drugstore. He'd give me a quarter if I'd been good. Oh, he didn't know no better. He'd give me a quarter and I could get a comic book. And it's back in the 50s. I mean, and I'd buy that comic book. I love those heroes that were just normal looking people. Didn't look like much. But they would do something magic. And these powers would come in. And there was this man. He was just a normal fella until he took his wrist and clipped them together. <laughs> 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 and I got to thinking about that. And I know they come out with movies later. I, I haven't seen them. I saw just a preview of one of them. That ain't what he looked like in the comic book. I left it alone. If it ain't according to the book, I ain't feeling it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm that way about King James Bible too, say amen. Amen. Hey, but, and I got to thinking, you know what this rap fella was in Luke 17? This one leper that came back, and with a loud voice he glorifies God. He gets on his face at Jesus' feet and gives him thanks that he's not a leper anymore. You know what he is? He's the first ex-man in the Bible. He was a leper. He was condemned. He was doomed. But all of a sudden when Jesus spoke to him, the power of Jesus Christ, X-Man. <laughs> He's not a leper anymore. Right. Jesus has changed him from what he was. Thank God. I'm glad. He's an X-Man. And I got to think, did you know there's X-Folks all in the Bible? There's X-Thieves. Yeah. Right. Amen. There's ex murderers. There's ex crooks. Yeah. There's ex liars. There's ex harlots. <laughs> there's ex murderers. Right. I ain't found an ex Yankee. Mm. <laughs> Whoa. Came from the northern end of the kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> Help him, Lord. <laughs> Amen. Hey. Brother, you all right, don't you? Uh, Amen. Hey, but listen, I'm talking about God made change. I want to say tonight, we need to get excited about the fact yeah. that we once were condemned with that leprosy of sin. Amen. We once were on our way to the devil's hell. Let me tell you why we, how we'll get revival. But once again, we realize, I don't care if you've been saved a hundred years. I don't care if you was born on a stack of King James Bibles, wrapped in a Christian flag, with a Bible bookmark in your mouth, and you was humming Amazing Grace when you first got <laughs> You needed to be born again. Right. You needed to be saved. Right. You would bust hell wide open without the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But thank God one day he just he passed by my way and my condition like I was. Amen. And I cried out for help. And thank God with this cleansing power. He made I tried to Amen. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. I want to say to you tonight, not ashamed of it. Some of these brothers walk around with their exes on their hat. Well, I got news for you. Ex man, not what I used to be. Amen. Thank God, maybe not what I ought to be. But you don't know anything. I ain't knew what I'm going to be. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And I want to look for a few minutes. We'll hurry. I, I've been hurrying for years, but we're going to really hurry. Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> that glory to God looks sincere. I'm going to add 15 minutes. Right there. <laughs> Amen. Hey. <laughs> what caused God to use this ex man? The same thing that we need to happen in us that God can use us. Mm -hmm. God can't use folks that's not had a change. Right. God can't use anybody that's just like they used to be. We, listen, we know what's wrong with our independent Baptist movement, and I'm an independent Baptist. That used to mean something, as he said today. Yes, that used to, that used to, you knew what that meant. You don't know what that means anymore. Right. You're don't right. God done something to you That's right. if you're saved. Amen. It would change. The problem with our, our churches are too normal. Right. right. Amen. I'm not talking about going crazy 
speaking in unknown tongues, all that stuff that God said he would do away with. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about folks fucking backflips off the back and stuff like that. But I want to tell you what, our churches, the average Baptist church is as dead as 4 o'clock in the morning. Right. If somebody says amen, about 25 of them will drench their neck, slap around their head, or go around 385 degrees. Hmm. They'll invent five degrees. <laughs> amen. I mean, they'll right. turn, they'll go nuts, they'll go crazy, and yet they can go around somebody else and cuss in the name of God, blaspheme in the name of God, making fun of Christians, and that don't bother them. Mm. I want to tell you something. Our churches, once again, need to be a house of prayer, but it also needs to be a house of fire. Amen. It, I mean, God's people ought to be excited about faith. We're not going to hell. Right. I want to tell you something. Hell's too hot. I, I, amen. I want to tell you, hell's too hot. I'm glad I'm not going. Amen. I'm glad I got right. too much blood amen. in me. I'm glad for the day Jesus reached down and saved me. Amen. 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 If you really get full of God, you'll be happy to do that for me. Amen. <laughs> amen. In the Philippines, they'll help you. <laughs> That's my next man. I'll have so fat, funny American. <laughs> three things. Number one, let's say three things about this next man. Mm. Number one, he made a public declaration. Look at verse number 15. And one of them, see, what we do, and, and what we do, and I'm going to hit them last, bump them for a little bit, but we preach a lot of messages worried about that 90%. There's a lot of preachers that call me Call Brother Dr. Whetstone, calls, and they're tore up over the 90% that's not doing anything in the church. Mm. God helped me a few years ago. You know what it showed me? Maybe all the focus on that crowd that is listening. Amen. Yeah. Maybe there focus on those that do want to serve God. Amen. Focus on those that they didn't get in because of the preacher or not because of the preacher. They got in because God put them in. Right. Made the X-Man out of it. Amen. Amen. Here's this fellow. I want you to watch it. He makes a public declaration. Verse number 15. And one of them. How many? One. one. How many? One. How many did we start with? Ten. But we only got what? One. one. When he saw that he was healed. Now you say, well, wait a minute. I thought that. Remember, Jesus had done cleansed him. Verse 14, and it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Now he can talk about being healed from leprosy. So you're not going to, a lot of folks want physical healing, but they don't want God to change their life. Can I get a witness? A lot of folks want to get out of the mess they're in, but they don't want God to change their life. Right, yeah. right. Listen, we have a rescue mission at our church, and there's a lot of fellows. Listen, it's changing faces every week. There's three or four faces, whatever, one week or two, then they're gone. You know why? They, they come, they want help from the consequences of their sin, but they don't want God to change them where they won't get back into it again. Mm. True. Can I get something? Amen. True. Amen. Now watch it. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. <laughs> I got news when God gets a hold of you, there's going to be a turning. Amen. He turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. I say that's a public declaration. Amen. I say, thank God he got excited about the fact. Happened in that other crowd. Now Jesus did tell him, go show yourself preacher. That was according to the law. Sir, that was according to the law. There's one big difference. What they didn't realize, one that superseded the law was in their presence. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is not the law. This is the fulfillment of the law. Amen. Jesus is better than anything you've ever had before. Right. Amen. And they take off and I and, and, and he go and he. But you know what he did? He had to look at his hand. It's not flesh, Paul. Whoa! Now, if he'd have been a full-blooded independent bastard, he'd go, hmm. No more rotten flesh. Right? That's right. Well, y'all go ahead. I'm, I'm contemplating. <laughs> True. I'm not sure I understand the perambulation of what is taking place here. That's right. Come on. I don't want to draw attention to myself. Right? I used to be a left when I was dying, but now I'm too. That's swell. <laughs> Columba. Uh-uh. That's not what he done. That's not what he did either. He said, Whoa! With the old Bible said, King James Bible. You got one out there, honey? Well, Lord, that's so many. How do you read that? <laughs> Amen. 
King James Bible with a loud voice. Yes. Right. With a loud voice. Yep. With a loud voice. Right. With a loud voice. Amen. I don't believe you all. Speak out in church and give God glory. <laughs> Strange thing. He thinks so 800 times in the Bible. I tell you. Yeah. Amen. With a loud voice. He glorified God. Why? He's not. What he used to be. Right. He's been changed. He's not under the same condemnation. Yeah. Hey, thank God he's not an opera anymore. Right. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. Hey, man, hey, he was cleansed. He is, re by the way, he's staying and rejoicing and praising God. Where's the other crowd? Right. You hang around praising God, it'll, it'll separate you from the rest of the crowd. Right, Amen. true. You won't have to worry about the folks that don't love God hanging around you. You go to shouting and praising God, they'll leave you alone. That's right. Yeah. right. Amen. Amen. Go to Walmart. Oh. They got them 25 registers with four of them open. Right. <laughs> Preach. Amen. It's a good day when I go to Walmart and get a buggy with all the wheels going the same direction. Amen. <laughs> Don't vibrate my wisdom teeth out. <laughs> you go in there, and Preacher Moore used to say, so all you got to do, go in there, there's a long line, and you're in a hurry. I'm always in a hurry. And we get up there, we done been in there, got our list, walk around, look at our list, and just as I get ready to get, Miss Ava says, I forgot something, and it's always something. Way back where we started three right. miles ago. That's true. Yep. <laughs> oh, my neck's killing me. I've had this surgery. Go ahead and get in line. And I'll get in line and people come by and say, you ready? Mm hmm? <laughs> <laughs> hey! Go ahead. Glory to God. They'll come in and they've got piggybacks. I mean, they got three of them. They might as well be a train. <laughs> They'll come in. You know all you got to do? Just stand there for a minute in line back if you're in a hurry. Especially on Monday. i tell you one thing. God sure was good to us at church yesterday. Amen. Boy, the Holy Ghost sure showed up. I mean, old Sister Williams got to shouting like a Comanche Indian. Boy, them fellas started getting sick. People get nervous. They go, they'll move out of the way and say, hey, here, 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 here take some of mine with you. you they'll, they'll clear it out for you. Right? You, you go to the church, you sit in the pew, you go to praise God, the grumblers and the grievers. Yeah. And the complainers, they won't, they don't have anything to tell you about the preacher. They'll leave you alone. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Cause they know that you love. You're just so happy that you're not what you used to be. Right. Amen. That you're not going to listen to anything that would criticize this church. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Mm. Right. Amen. Hey. Amen. Praise and thanksgiving will separate you from the other crowd, and my soul shall be joyful. And in the Lord, it shall rejoice. Not what it used to be. Man. This old fellow down in eastern North Carolina back in the early 60s, they, they started putting in them old, old old farms down around Goldsboro, Kinston, Newburn, septic tanks. And then people, that's before the government got involved, the county telling you how to do it, coming out, paying people to show you how to put it in the ground. They just, they just got the old tractor and dug a hole, didn't worry about whether it was level, <coughs> just set her in there. It'll work. Well, one night this old farmer and his son, the, the thing kind of got backed up a little bit, so they, he took the lid off of it, took dug the dirt off. Of course, it won't regulation. It was only about six inches underground. He dug it up in the hole, took the lid off, and they didn't get done. The sun's going down. It's falls coming on. So your days get shorter and they get caught. He said, well, son, don't worry about it. So we're out here in the country. We have to pack a lunch and go to the mailbox. There ain't nobody can bother us. <laughs> Said it's going to be all right. Said just leave the lid off of it. We'll get to it in the morning. There won't it won't bother anything. Don't you know that's the? Uh -huh. Guess what happened at three o'clock in the morning? They're laying there with them windows open, that cool fall breeze blowing through, getting that good night's sleep. Mm. Bless them, Lord. And all of a sudden they heard. <laughs> they jump up. Pa get 
puts on one of them gas lanterns and heads out there. He's got on his long johns. Amen. Y'all know what they are up here. Amen. They used to call them union suits, but I ain't calling nothing union. Say amen. Amen. True. To the battlefield today. We won that. Amen. Amen. And he's got, he's got buttons about all of them. He's out there, and they, he's about like me, three hair hanging down. He's standing over the lantern, and the boy, about 15 years old, shows up. He's standing there with his lantern, another canal over there. And there's that old sorry, no count dog that somebody put out about three or four years ago. Dog not do that. Put that dog out, poor thing, and you know who his daddy was. That's a joke there. Don't, don't, don't take it to heart there. It's going to be all right. I'd give an invitation. I believe he'd come to the altar. <laughs> that old dog's in there. Woo, 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 woo. And the boy says, Daddy, what we're going to do? He said, Boy, I don't know. Well, Daddy, maybe he'll get sick of that mess and just jump out. Boy, you sound as dumb as your mama's people. <laughs> he said, Well, Daddy, we can't... Let me go get a ladder and put that ladder down there and maybe he'll see those rungs of that ladder. He'll climb out and he said, no, now you sound like my people, boy. <laughs> Daddy, what we gonna do? Boy, that dog ain't no count. He was put out. He's, he's not a thoroughbred. They put him out all the time. We'll get another one. Let's, we, he ain't worth, listen, he don't, he howls at the moon. He won't chase a biscuit. He's not fitting to, he don't hunt. He won't even chase a rabbit. Let's just put the lid over, and after a while, he'll blend in with the rest of it. Turn to get that show. To start moving that lid over. While his back was turned, that young boy that had that dog since he was about 12, since the boy was 12. Oh, the dog wasn't no count. And the daddy was right, he didn't hunt. And that dog did just lay around, and you'd trip over him coming off the steps, he'd lay right under the step. He wasn't no count. But that boy sure liked that dog. And when that daddy turned his head, that boy jumped off that boat. And there's a splash in that septic tank. And all that corruption. And that boy took his arms and threw it around that dying dog and climbed out of there. Went over to the old well pump and pumped that water and cleaned that dog off. I want to say to you, 2,000 years ago, the devil could have said, he ain't no good. Good man ain't a lick of good. He'll betray you. He'll turn on you. He ain't no count. But Jesus Christ, the darling Lamb of God, Amen. got up from off the throne of God and came and condescended and left the world of purity and holiness and impeccability and jumped down in the cesspool of this world and wrapped his arms around me and you and lifted us out of the pit of miry clay. I want to say to you, we ought to serve him because you were asked me. Amen. Amen. What he's done, we ought to praise him with a loud voice. Amen. He said, I don't want to embarrass myself. You ought to get over yourself. Amen. Yourself was taking you to hell. Right. Thank God he came and got you. Amen. Number two, he made a public declaration. Number two, he made a private demonstration. I just spent 15 minutes preaching about shouting and praising God. And we ought not to back up one inch on it. Amen. Amen. But you better back up your public declaration with a private demonstration. Amen. Amen. What are you in private? Yes. If your hands have been touching the forbidden things, God's word forbid, don't lift them up in church and wave your hands. Right. If your tongue's been cursing, your tongue's been saying what it ought not to say. Don't, don't, don't lift up your tongue and you lift until you get on offer and you mm -hmm. right with God. Right. If your eyes been looking in the wrong place. Amen. Hello. Amen. Amen, Amen goes right there. That's right. Especially on that computer. Amen. Missionaries, preachers, marriages, homes, and churches are being destroyed That's right. by the internet. That's right. Amen. Amen. It's true. I'm not preaching against all the internet. I don't do that Facebook stuff. Now, are you missionaries? That's good. And the great. I, I just, I don't. It ain't none of their business. What I eat for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe what some people put on Facebook. Yeah. Amen. And then I'm gonna tell you one thing. I sure hope nobody in this church. Preacher, I'm gonna take a little liberty here. If you all right? Amen. 
I wouldn't take no picture of myself and put on public if it's going to disgrace the cause of Christ hey. in my church testimony. Hey. Right. Right. If you're going to do that, would you please quit the choir? Hey. Would you quit the... Yeah. Hello, are we doing all right? Yeah. We're talking about revival, Lord. Amen. Are we doing okay? Fine, I finally got somebody waving their hand here. Hey. Amen. Y'all just want somebody to preach junkyard dog mean, don't you? Yeah. Hey, are you with me? I'm saying, hey, hey, amen. But I want to tell you something. If you're not going to back it up with a private demonstration, right. you, you stay quiet in public. Amen. Your first public act ought to be an altar. Yes. Right. Yes. Amen. True. Hey man, I tell you what to get. I tell you what to revive fundamentalism. If the members of our church will get right with God and have the Holy Ghost sin kill and revive. Yeah. Right. Hey right. man. Amen. All right. Back to. All right. All right. All right. Well, I, that was part of. It. Okay. He club, back. What? Watch. Watch. Private demonstration. Watch what he does. He stops. <laughs> when you get when you get what you need from God, it'll stop you. It'll turn you around. And watch what he does. And fell down on his face. Verse sixteen. Giving him thanks. And he was Samaritan. He comes back to a place of surrender. He falls at... <laughs> oh, you, that's a long trip, too. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I mean, folks come and sit in church. What time we get now? Why don't you just try getting in one time? Amen. Why don't you just try to get in on what's going on? Right. Some of you in such a hurry to get out, you back to your parking place. <laughs> you think this is NASCAR, gentlemen. Start your engine. When the preacher says you're dismissed, you run out, you leave your wife's high heel shoes in the aisle, grab the bird, she's she stretched out like a greyhound dog inside that bus. <laughs> Throwing her in the car, boom, getting out of here and going over, grinding over three children. Why don't you try just. <laughs> Why don't you try just getting in church and enjoy it? Amen. Why don't you go and enjoy the fact Jesus has saved you? Amen. Why don't you enjoy the fact that he'll help you through your problems? Why don't you get the fact that he'll take care of you? You're not going to go down. You're going to go up. Thank God we're on the gospel ship. And she's going to make it. Why don't you just go ahead and enjoy it? Amen. Or give it a place of surrender. Boy, anybody done that for you, you ought to be excited about it. Say amen. amen. Hey. He made a private difference. He's in a place of surrender. He's in the right place. He's in the right position. He's putting, he's bowed. He's on his face. It's not only a place of, of, of surrender. It's a position of submission. He'll never get in word with God to submit to his will. Submit to the precious Holy Ghost. I couldn't, I couldn't do that. I, that ain't like me. Well, that's why it, it needs to happen. Folks need to see what God's done for us that ain't like us. Right. Thank God they need to see what the Holy Ghost can do for us. Amen. Hey, there's a principle of worship, too. He's giving thanks. He's glorified. Did you know get glory, get glorified Him is not just words, it's life. Yeah. The way we live, it ought to be a lifestyle. Giving praise, glorifying. First, hey, 1 first Thessalonians 5, 18. In everything give thanks. Well, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. <coughs> I heard about a preacher many years ago. Preached over in Louisiana. He was going back to Atlanta. And he said, I'm going to drive back tonight. It's a long drive, but I've been gone all week and I'm tired. I'm going to go home. He starts down the road. And got just about to let the train. Boy, that, boom, 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 boom. that tire blew out. He had all his stuff packed in the car and the trunk was loaded. He got out. Now, Lord, I preached my heart out all week. I'm wore out. It's dark. It's the middle of the night. I can't see where I'm going. Now I got to change this tire. I got to take everything out of this car, put it on this side of this road, dig around and find the jack. Just hope there's one in there. You know how we are. There might be one. There might not be. <laughs> <laughs> And he, 30 minutes later, he's putting the last piece of luggage back in the car. And he says, Lord, all right, maybe we can go home now. He gets down the road about 10 minutes, and there's red lights and blue lights. And they're standing there, people in the highway waving. Got them vests on, they're waving and bang. He stops. He says, What's wrong? What's wrong? And the big old state patrolman comes over and says, Sir, 30 minutes ago, a barge come down this river and it 
was too tall and it just took out this bridge 30 minutes ago. He said, we've got five cars that's running to their death. Rescue squads are trying to get a man. He said, anybody that's been there here 30 minutes ago will be at the bottom of that bayou. Mm -hmm. That man got back in his car. He said, thank you, Lord. I'm so sorry that I run. Friend, I want to tell you, from a child of God, there's no accidents. Right. Everything is under his providential right. care. And we ought to be on our face, submitting to the will of God. It starts with, well, I start the way I want it. Who asked you? Amen. 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 Who asked you? The, the crowd that wants it the way they want it, they've gone. Yeah. Amen. But the crowd that comes to his feet yeah. is under his control. Amen. Amen. Okay. He made a public declaration. He made a private demonstration. Number three. He made up, and this is the last one, his favorite point in every sermon the preacher has, finally my brother. <laughs> he made a personal decision. Look at verse number 19. And he said unto him, Jesus said unto him, All right, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. I want to say thank God we still get help by faith. Amen. It's still trusting him when you can't track him. It's believing him when you can't trust him. Year or so ago, my precious wife and I were enduring some things. Hardest thing we'd ever been through in our life. And truth is, it's not changed. Truth is, if you some way to look at it, it actually got worse. But when God both showed us to not look at our problem from this angle, but to look at it from his angle. Mm -hmm. God knows how to turn it around. Amen. Right. Some of you, I mean, I hear the devil say, boy, you made it for almost 24 years. Your tongue, your fun's over here. I got you now. Where's your shouting now? Mm. Where's your praising God now? How are you going to get up there and say anything now? How are you going to do that now? I want to tell you, God gave us the victory. I'm telling you now, looking back on it now, we see God still working. No, it didn't come out the way we wanted it to. No. But it's not about us and what we right. want. That's it's right. about God can take care of whatever we have to deal with. Yes. If we'll just submit to Lord. it. Amen. All right, now, he made a personal decision by faith. He trusted the Lord. He said, I, hey, he turned around. What, what, what triggered his faith when he realized what God had done for him? Amen. You know what to help this church. You know what to fill this place up. You know what to bring in sinners and get them saved. And y'all are doing a wonderful work here. This is a great Tuesday night crowd. And it's great meeting this morning. And I know you have great services there. But I'll tell you what to just blow the roof off this place. If people in here will get excited about what God's done for them. And realize you're an next man Amen. I had a woman come up to me in Dublin, Georgia one time. I preached this. She came up to me. She said, Preacher, I'm an ex-woman. <laughs> <laughs> I had to, I just preached that one night and I said, Preacher, maybe we don't need to run this meeting no more. <laughs> maybe the night was enough. I said, and I, I, of course, you know me, I'm crazy. I said, well, ma'am, I knew what she meant, but I, I couldn't leave it alone. I said, well, what were you for you as a woman? <laughs> he said, it didn't bother me. said, go ask my husband. He said, I was a she-woman. I'm a she-devil. I said, Lord, have mercy. Well, she woman would be a woman, wouldn't it? Let me leave that alone. Let me go to my house. <laughs> Amen. He made a personal decision. Now, I want you to watch this. Jesus told those fellows, the other nine, go to the priest. He told all of them to go to the priest. But he was fulfilling the law. Yes, he was. But he is beyond the law. He supersedes the law. He does what the law cannot do. But let me tell you, the law didn't cleanse me. Right. See, they did. They took off running, but they didn't stop to realize they had really been cleaned. And what he did, he turned. Jesus looks and says, where are the nine? I want to ask you tonight, where are the nine? Right. Where's the other crowd that Jesus saved with the same blood? That's right. Yeah. Where's the rest of them that he stretched out his hands and let him pierce them and his feet? Where's the rest of us? that he took those crown of thorns, dug into his skull, ripped their flesh off. Where's the rest of us that he took that spear for? Yeah. Where are we? He makes a statement there. You see, son. Amen. I'm not in Revelation.
Galatians? No, I can't. <laughs> He's all right. Jesus said, verse 17, Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? Next verse, look at verse 18. I misread this verse for years. Y'all probably wouldn't do that, but I did. They are not found that was returned to give glory to God, save the stranger. <coughs> I've always read that they are not found. T-H-E-Y, apostrophe, R-E. They are, they, those nine, those people, they are not found. That's not what he said. I saw this several years ago, and I said, God, just talk to me. I didn't open a commentary, I'm not against that. I said, Lord, there's something to show it to me. And it dawned on me. When I went back, read the passage over, I read it over and over again. Where was the left? Where was the where was the ex man? He was at Jesus' feet. He's, mm -hmm. he's he's what? He was there. He's there. Yes. The truth is, Jesus says, There are not found. Right. That's exactly right. There's nine other places. Yes, right. There were ten cleansed. But nine are not there. Right. Yeah. It's not about whether your name's on the Sunday school roll and you get a check corner. And you ought to be in Sunday school. Yeah. Right. It's not about just filling a spot in your pew, even to the place where we don't know you're going to be there, but when you're there, you don't want nobody to sit within three inches of it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I passed the Baptist. I know. <laughs> it's about him. He bled and died. Where are the God's got a hold of my heart. As the preacher said last night, he don't ever preach without preaching to himself in conviction. Amen. God got a hold of me. Well, Cody, I mean, God said to my heart, there is there going to be a day when all I've done for you, there's going to be a day I'm looking down from heaven. And I know he's sovereign, and I know he's omniscient, and I know he's, I know that. Where he looks down. He, did, he was talking with that crowd too. And he still says, where are they? He knew where they were. But he's saying this. I can't do it. When God looks down from heaven tonight. Are you in your place at this point? Mm. Mm. Where are you? Right. Well, I was there one time. I don't, I don't do that. There's nine other places that are empty. Amen. Oh God, don't ever let my place be. Amen. Don't let my spiritual faith ever be empty. Lord, don't ever let me forget. General Robert Gordon led the South Carolina militia in the Civil War. At the end of the war, he was up. They were reconstituting this uh, state assembly in South Carolina. Most of the state and the town of Columbia has been burned. They get ready to assemble. There was he had some subordinate officers that, for whatever reason, in battle, they felt like that the general had done wrong, and they, 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 they despised him. They couldn't stand him. And they were members of the South Carolina legislature, and they weren't going to vote for him. And only one person voted against him with, with disqualify. <coughs> they got there in that meeting, and they called the names, different ones. Then they got to General Robert Gordon, and he stood up. He came with that sleeve of that right arm pinned to his coat. There's no arm. General Gordon was dragging the leg. Wounded him back. When he got up there and turned in the light, they all could see that saber sword wound from here down his neck course, without modern medical science, it had opened up about an inch wide down the side of his face. All right, do we accept this man? And the man that was a subordinate officer sitting back there that had the right and the authority to say, I'm going to stop it, and he vowed he would, sat there in stunned silence. His friends next to him punched him and said, this is it. Say something. He's going to get elected if you don't say, this is it. He buries his hands in his, his face in his hands. He starts shaking his head. I can't. And all of a sudden that deafening silence was broken with the scream of, I can't. 
I can't. I came here and he stood up, just oblivious to the crowd. He said, I came here to vote against it. I came here because I hated it. But I can't. I forgot about the scars. I forgot about the wounds. And when I saw those, my heart has changed. And I want to say it's time for God's children to stop our rapid pace. Amen. Stop our selfish decisions. Mm -hmm. Stop our running to and fro. And remember the scars. Amen. Of the blessed Savior. Right. And the wounds. And go to serving Jesus because of what he first done for us. Amen. 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 Heads about eyes are closed.